Good morning, our Lord. We're about to get started here. All right. Thank you so much for joining, everyone. Uh, this is going to be LJ Housing Market Report, and uh, today is February 11th, 2023. And this uh, meeting is for our agents and we want to go over interest rates uh, news headlines and we want to talk about Zillow leads right we spoke about it a few meetings back but a few of you guys still had questions on that so we're going to go deep into uh, Zillow profile how we actually set it up how we add your photos and your bio and stuff like that and we're going to go through the contract sample so as you know the attorney's job is to review the contract but if we're if we have a contract, I expect our agents just to read it and know what's going on there, what contingency should be there, what shouldn't be there. Makes you look better, makes you look more professional. So, like I said, anything along the way, if you guys have any questions, comments, unmute yourself or simply just put your questions in the chat box. All right. So let's get started with our interest rates. So from Wednesday's meeting until today, the interest rate went up 0.03% as U.S. weekly averages, right? These are the averages uh, for the whole United States, and this is through Freddie Mac, and it's ticked up a little bit, right, from last time. And according to Mortgage News Daily, we'll keep this brief because we're doing this on uh, every meeting I, I hope you guys getting the gist of it we're following interest rates twice a week so this way you guys are up to date with the market uh, for, according to mortgage news daily we're looking at around 6.50 right for a uh, 30-year fixed rate and for FHA they're looking at around 5.88 and as a disclaimer we always have to say this these interest rates are not your interest rates these are the national averages yours will vary uh, depending on your credit, how much down payment you're going to use, which program you're going to use, uh, stuff like that. So there's a lot of factors that come along when you're getting your interest rates. It's always best to compare with a few different agencies or lenders and see who has the best interest rates and terms for you. Okay. Uh, according to Mortgage Note, uh, just as we were saying, it went up to 6.10. This is just another... Uh, confirmation of exactly what we we're saying this was in the news as of this morning and we're reviewing that now right it went up a little bit any questions on the interest rates uh, or or anything like that for you guys right. so again they're hovering around six percent for new agents that just joined us uh just know that if uh, uh client of yours is paying an interest rate of 8%, you should know the reason why they're doing that. Either they're getting a non-QM loan, which is you know not a normal loan, uh, it's for, usually for investors, or if they're paying you know 4% interest rate, you guys should know why they're doing that. Either they're buying down the rate or they have a non-QM and they're paying more. But the average you should be looking at is around 6%. All right, let's move on guys. Uh, to our affordability. And we're gonna just use one scenario because we do it every time, a different scenarios. So we'll do, uh, let's say someone's making uh, $83,000 or $73,000. And we said the interest rates are 6.12. And let's say they have 39,000 as down payment. And their monthly obligations, minimum payments is 300. And the property taxes they're paying is around 9,000. The home insurance is 1600 maybe it's a bigger house and their dti is 49. so according to this they only qualify for three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars okay seventy thousand dollars seventy three thousand dollars annual with thirty nine thousand dollars down payment if the down payment increases to fifty nine thousand let's say it goes up to three hundred and thirty five thousand dollars okay if they're getting an fha loan now you can go up with DTI, your 54%, and it will go up. Okay. Affordability. Again, you guys can use these um, calculator from Zillow, from Bankrate, and just simply put affordability calculator, and you will see similar calculators. So you guys have an idea how much uh, your client will qualify for. Okay. Any questions so far, guys? All right, 
So now let's talk about the news. This is one of the uh, charts that I really found uh, a little disturbing uh, because we know that there is a you know discrimination uh, from in the United States for many many years, and as realtors we can make a difference. We really can. And according to this, in 2000, from 2015 to 2019, 71.7 of white household owned homes versus 47% of household of color, right? How can we make this difference? We can encourage people of color, you know, from different nationalities, especially we're living in Queens and we have such a diverse, uh, uh, you know, amount of people from different communities and we just want to help them. We never want to judge them. doesn't matter what type of work they're doing, what type of, you know, their situation is. As long as they are qualified, we're looking for qualified clients. They have pre-approval. We want to encourage them, right, to purchase the house. That's the only way these numbers will change, right, or these stats will change when we as realtors are encouraging our clients, hey, you're looking for a house? I'm going to go beyond your expectations and get you the property that you're looking for, the area that you want to be in. You know, so that's the only way we can make a difference. So, like I said, uh, these stats over the years, the way we are going moving forward, hopefully they do change. Um, but like I said, it starts with the realtor. If you are discovering your clients saying, hey, let's not be in this area. Oh, let's not be in this area. We know that's illegal and we don't want to do that. You know, we want to encourage them in the area, the schoolings, every system, every person has their, uh, you know, opportunity to get good ad education and, you know, own a property. So as realtors, just be that person. And trust me, it will go a long way and they will, you know, give you a lot of a referral business when you put your heart out and you, you know, give the, show them many, many properties that they want and they actually make an offer and, you know, complete the transaction basically. So please, you know, when you're dealing with your clients, it should be absolutely no discrimination and you should be encouraging them to purchase a house. Okay. Any questions, comment, concerns on this, guys? This is a very serious topic and we want all our agents to be on top of that, you know, and uh, actually help out our clients. And like I said, the way I judge them is by their pre-approval. If you're qualified, great. I'm going to help you out. If you and we have seen this many times too, a person comes in and it seems like they're not qualifying, right? For some reason, and they're saying, "Hey, my budget is five hundred thousand dollars," and they're looking for a property that's around six hundred thousand dollars. You know, if I'm a realtor, I'm gonna you know see the situation and still try to show them that's in that price range between five and six. So now, if they really like the property, this happened many times. The way they come up with another co-signer or co-borrower. Um, that will be on the contract and get the deal done. So, you know, just to point out that don't be judgmental in the beginning. Just do your job, add them to KV Core, set up alerts, and start showing them, right? And let's see how things turn out after that. I hope we are clear on this. Okay. Any questions, guys? All right. So with, when it comes to mortgages, right, as a lender now or a, a loan officer, it could be us, it could be anybody else that you're working with. The reason those loan officers are so strict because they're following guidelines that's provided by their, you know, overlays by their lender or, you know, the government, right? If you're getting an FHA loan, there's a set of guidelines that the loan officer has to follow for that, right? And if there's something that, your client cannot produce a condition. Let's say uh, the loan officer say, hey, how did you get $20,000 deposited in your account? And they cannot explain that, right? There's going to be a problem. They need, you know, the lender needs to know where this money is coming from, right? So now if one of our loan officer or one of, uh, you know, another bank's loan officer try to do something that's not legal, it will come back and haunt them. It might take years to do that, but it will. So like, uh, we, like we always say, we're going to do the right thing. We're going to try to put in 
uh, you know, uh, provide the best rates, best terms, best, you know, the lowest fees. But at the same time, when it comes to conditions, it gets a little hectic. Hey, why is the loan officer asking me for this, this, this? It's not the loan officer that's asking for it. It's the lender who's going to give you guys the loan for $400,000 $500,000, or even if it's a fam two-family house, uh, $800,000 loan, they need to make sure that they're fully satisfied. And they're going to do that by asking proof of this, proof of that. So encourage your client. So tell them, hey, if the loan officer is asking for this, provide it as soon as possible so there's no delays on your transaction. Where right? you want clear to close, again, this does not mean that they have to go with us. It could be any lender. It could be Chase. It could be Citibank. It could be any any bank that they're working with. But when it comes to conditions, they have to clear them as soon as possible so they can get cleared to close. But if they stop, if they don't do that, it's just going to be delays from every angle possible, right? The reason I bring this up is that if you look at this article here, uh, PRMI, which is Primary Resident Mortgage Inc., has a legal bill of more than $20,000, $20 million, sorry, $20 million after losing a fight for over defaulted mortgages. Right. So they did something funny back in 2008 and there was a court case going on and now they have a bill to pay. Again, if we follow the rules, we have nothing to worry about. Right. But if we don't, it will come back and haunt us. So it's best to follow the rules. Tell your clients, hey, you know, if the lender is giving you a loan, they want to be satisfied with their conditions and keep providing them. Right. Any questions, concerns on that? Why loan officers are sore? going back and forth with your clients for conditions. We call them chasing conditions because literally once you get the commitment, the commitment says it, hey, this is a conditional commitment. We are committed, the bank is committed to give your client the loan, but we are conditions with these five items, 10 items, 15 items, and some of them are very small. Hey, just show us a proof of this, bank, checked off. Some of them are a little bit more complicated. You know, if it's a gift, so do you need a, a gift letter signed from the person who's giving you the money? So all these little things, the loan officer provides it to your buyer and your buyer needs to provide it back to the loan officer. You as a realtor, you don't have to get involved. I never want, you know, our um, agents to be involved where the, the client is emailing you uh, a document and then you have to send it to the loan officer. No, it should not work like that. If a loan officer needs something, it should go directly from the client to the loan officer. You should not be involved with any of those paperwork. Let's say if there's a paperwork is, um, you know, modified in any way and you are not sure of it and you're just forwarding it, you might be liable for that, you know, because you're the one who's providing it to the loan officer. So just be, you know, protect yourself. Uh, don't get involved in that. And, uh, you know, just let them have a direct communication with the loan officer. You as a, a, a realtor have the right to follow up with your loan of, with their loan officer. It could be weekly, it could be biweekly and just saying, hey, this is Sheldon from LJ Realty team. And we have this deal going on for one, two, three Main Street. I just want to see the status of it, you know. And if it's a good uh, MLO, a loan officer, they should follow up with you as well. We do that all the time. Hey, your file is clear to close. Hey, you know, we need this from your uh, client and we already send them. If you want to follow up with that, that's no problem. But not providing actual documents from your email to the loan officer, that should be a no-no. Everybody clear on this or need me to go over anything? Hey, what's up? Oh, clear. Okay. All right. Okay. This is another one now. We keep talking about fraud because it is happening. Half of this is from Housing Wire. Half of quarter, uh, fourth quarter of 2022 transaction had wire and title fraud risk. Right? Tell me if you guys can hear this in the chat box.
Sheldon, so he can hear. Can you guys hear that or no? Mohammed said no sound. Oh, I can't hear. All right. So I'm not able to. Okay. Never mind. So, but they're talking about exactly what we're saying that there has been fraud for wire and title. And these can be like, uh, uh, you know, a spam email going to the loan officer where, you know, they're saying your file is clear to close. You need to click on a link. Um, the goal here is that we don't want to click on any emails or text messages that has links that you're not aware of. Before you click on any link, it could be from your phone or your computer, right? You should know where is it coming from. We had that fraud going on with, within our own company where, uh, you know, another person from outside pretending to be me, hey, I need a gift card, you know, for this, I need that, you know? And you might be thinking, why well, Lucky needs a gift card, you know, all of a sudden. Uh, so any of those things, you should be, that's why we have Microsoft Teams. Nobody can hack into that and chat within, you know, um, with our, uh, through Microsoft Teams there. That's the most secure way. But when it comes to emails, just be careful. You know, if you see any emails from a mortgage side, from real estate side, and you guys are not expecting it, do not click on the link. Okay. That's the best way to protect yourself. Okay. But there has been a lot of title and wire transfer fraud uh, going on when it comes to mortgages. Okay. And from our end, just be careful when you're opening up your emails. Okay. Any questions, concerned guys? Yeah, we'll share that link. Okay, that's a good one. So I'm putting that link in the chat here so you guys can hear that out. Okay. Next, for an investor, this is a brand new, new uh, property on the market. Uh, I think it's a good one for the investors again. It just came on the market. I will take the MLS ID and we'll drop it in Stratus to get more details. The taxes are less than $10,000. The lot size is good, 42 by 181. Uh, has four bedrooms, two and a half baths, and listed for 414. So this is a great opportunity for an investor. So if you have an investor, I would highly recommend you guys forward this to them and see if they want to actually see the property inside. Okay. And you guys getting paid 2.5 on that. And the good thing about this is that you have access to inside and the price is right. See, you know, take your investors to this property, see how much the property needs work. They will do the estimate. Let's say if it's going to cost them $50,000 extra and they want to put in an offer for three eighty-five dollars or three ninety, dollars that's still a solid offer for this property here. Okay. So just know that this is good for investors here. Okay. Next, I want uh, to go over Zillow now, right? Zillow, as we said before, we want all our agents to have at least a free profile, um, pr free profile, you know, um, for Zillow. Just like how you have your Instagram or your uh, Facebook or any other social media, you know, you can have that as a realtor on Zillow. You should be on Zillow because that's where the clients are shopping at, okay? So, out of our 62 agents, we only, 64 agents, excuse me, uh, we only have about 17 uh, that's on Zillow here. So, the number is really low. Uh, we really want to see this at least 40 to 45 people. I hope everybody joins it because there's no fee to actually have your profile set up on Zillow, right, which we're going to go over. But we want to see this number increase. So this makes you look good, look, uh, look good as well if they're on your profile and then they go to our company, say, hey, you know, this company has this many agents. We legitimately have over 60 agents, so why not be on it and tell other people, right? So we're going to show you how you set up this profile. One is that in your Microsoft Teams, once you're under Teams here, under LG Realty Team, everybody should have access to that. And you should see Leads Zillow account, okay? Under Microsoft Teams, LJ Realty Team, and Leads Zillow account. If you don't see this for some reason, if you don't see this for some reason, you can click on Hidden Channels on the bottom and then scroll for Leads, and then you can click on Show, okay? 
But the point is that once you see that here, you can see this channels details here. Or if you just type in up here, leads Zillow account, this channel will also pop up. So what we're going to go over is how to article. This is how we actually set up our free profile on Zillow. Okay. So once you click, click on it, it will take you to this article here, which I'm going to actually share this in the chat as well for you guys to make it easier. Okay. So we're going to create a free profile on Zillow. So one is that we're going to go to Zillow.com and we're going to register. First it says sign in or it says new account. Type in your email address and create a password. It could be same as what you have on KB Core, but does not have to. If you want to make your life easier, set it up the same so you don't forget it. Unless you write it down, there's no problem. Okay. So create a new account. After you register, click on Agent Hub. And then click on Profile. And the profile, just like how we are setting up our social media uh, profiles, is very similar. We want to click on Profile, Edit Photo, put in your professional photo. If you need these photos with our purple circle on it, I have all of them in our, in our database. Just send me a message. I'll forward that to you and upload that photo there. Okay. You click on Add Photo, Choose File, and Upload. And then you want to take a few minutes and actually write your you know, profiles, um, edit your profiles page with your professional information. You want to talk about all the real estate. Hey, I can help you purchase a property in Queens and Long Island. Uh, I'm always available for you. All the good stuff that you want to write. Take a few minutes. It should be unique. Everybody should have different lines for, each, you know, for their profile. But these are your selling points. What are you really good at? If you're really good at renting and buying, put that. If you're really a top producer for a listing agent, you know, put that in there. So you want to add as many, much information as possible because it will stick out. Okay. Some of our agents, I'll give you an example here. Uh, uh, two, 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 two. I believe check G2. Yeah, there's no information here, no photo here, right? So the good thing about uh, this agent is that at least he created a profile, but there's no information there. So we, we want to look good. So we want to be, you know, put it look professional on every profile. So put in your nice headshot, put about me, put your uh, old activity that you have done. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So once you have added that, then you want to add your, like we said, uh, about me page. And then you can add your past sales as well. So even though you're getting a brand new Zillow account today, but you have sold properties in the past, it will link your profile with MLS. You can manually put in old sales. Hey, I have sold this property this time. Then you put in the address, you can do that. And it pulls all the data from Zillow, I'm oh, sorry, from MLS as well to Zillow. Okay. Again, once you have that set up and you need my assistant, you just tell me, we go through it together where we can add your past sales. Okay. And you want to take your profile to the next level by requesting reviews. You want your previous clients that you have already dealt with. It could be for renting. It could be buying. It could be selling, you know, uh, you're basically sending them a, a link, say, please write a review for me on Zillow, it will help a lot, right? Those Zillows hold a lot of authority on it just because it's gonna be um, coming in from a buyer or the seller that you have dealt with a uh, past client and it will just make you stick out. More review you have, the better ranking that you will have on Zillow, okay? And we said we can connect your listings. This is done directly through MLS and uh, the email that you're using on Zillow, just make sure it's the same email that you have on file with MLS, which is your LJ Realty Team email. So it should be carls at ljrealtyteam.net or prince at ljrealtyteam.net. Use that one instead of using your personal. This way, it will automatically connect your listings that you have or even uh, the deals that you're going under contract with. If MLS gets updated, Zillow will get updated automatically. Okay. 
and that's it about creating your free account on Zillow. Questions, concerns on this, guys? Very important that you guys know this. Right? So everybody should have a free account. That should be number one concern, right? All the new agents that's uh, signing up, we're making a rule now that, you know, when you're going through our, you know, sessions, training sessions with me, probably on the third or the fourth uh, meeting, we're going to actually set up this Zillow. If you are not comfortable doing this, just do a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me uh, online and we can set you up on that. But it's fairly simple, pretty straightforward. Julian, good one. Yeah. So when you have, if you're a brand new agent and you haven't sold any properties, right, you can come up with different tactics. You don't have to, you never want to lie in your profile. You don't want to say, hey, I've sold 100 houses where you have sold zero, right? But you, I can help you. I can assist you. I work with a good team that, you know, uh, where we can get you to the closings uh, quicker. You know, we can help you every step of the way. So there's different ways, different lines that you can use. Uh, if you need assistance, again, set up an appointment with me and we'll do that for you. But you want your bio to stick out, right? Maybe you guys can do the first draft on your own. Hey, I want to write this. I want to write that. I want to write that. Just send me that paragraph and maybe I can revise it for you guys and send it back, right? So everybody got an idea how we do this? Right. All right. So once you have created an account now, right? So once you have created an account now, you would want to advertise. That's optional. It's not required. But if you're looking for leads and it's working out for a lot of our agents where they're promoting themselves on Zillow and uh, buying different zip codes and, uh, you know, and it's, they're getting leads. They're not the best leads, but at the same time, if you're not doing this, we're not moving forward anyways. So why not spend a little bit of money on Zillow and start getting some leads from that, right? So once you're logged in and everything, you can click on Sorry, let me just take you guys, okay. Once you're logged in, you're gonna click on advertisement and you're going to click on share with lender. So what this will do is that once you spoke with uh, Zillow and you're saying, hey, I have a budget of, let's say, $400 and I want to be in this zip code or that zip code and you're testing it out, whatever your budget is, we will allow up to $200 where you can add us as a lender and we will pay up to $200 per month for your advertisement. So if your budget was total was $400, we are paying 200 and 200 is coming from your account and Zillow is handling all that. So it doesn't have to be like I have to chase you or you have to chase me uh, end of the month and, you know, try to balance out. Zillow is already doing that. That's what I like about it. So hopefully you guys can use that, too. So what we're seeing on our back end as a lender now, this is the profile that we're signed in. So we see co-marketing and we see these agents and this is the monthly spend that we're doing. Again, right now we are about uh, 900 bucks and we can take this up to around maybe, you know, close to $2,000 if necessary, as long as you guys are advertising. Once we hit that, then I will tell you guys, hey, that was our budget. Once a few of our agents don't want to do the advertisement, then we'll add on new ones. So I would highly recommend that you guys take advantage of this, sign up with Zillow, do some, you know, um, advertisement and split the cost with us. And I just want to show you how, how it looks on their profile. So this is Mohammed's profile, right? This is actually great. He actually put in his nice uh, headshot photo, has his full name on there, um, has a bio. But he's a new agent, so these will start kicking in once we have, even under contract. So I think Mohammed, uh, for this, the deals that you have under contract on MLS should show up here. So maybe set up an appointment with me where we can go over this with you, uh, how to link your MLS listings to your profile. So your pendings one will show up here too. Okay. And for example, for Mohammed's right, his budget, I mean, we're spending up 138, 
because whatever your budget is, right? Slide is not really, You guys can see my screen. Okay, one second. Okay, I got it. Okay, window, and it's gonna be. Hopefully, now you guys can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. You guys can see it now? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, perfect. So, like I was saying, this is on our back end as a lender. This is what we're seeing as uh, under our Zillow profile as LJ Mortgage Team. So these are the active relationships that we have with our agents, right? These are the five agents that's spending. So anything that you see 200 here, that's the maximum we go. So you can spend up to 50% of your budget with us. If you have a higher budget, you guys can go through that, but we're willing to pay up to $200 for it, right? And... Uh, Just want to review that one more time like for muhammad's profile looks really good on the top section here has a you know profile photo has his information here the buyer looks good and then where it says premier lenders and then this comes up this is what we're paying 200 dollars for or 138 in his case right so it does not show anything for real estate or anything like that this one on top here says lj realty on it but on the bottom as a lender we come up does this mean that they have to use us? No, they don't. But it's just sort of advertisement that we're doing. So why not you guys be part of it? And like I was saying earlier, um, I think the max we will go is maybe $2,000 per month if we have all our agents that want to, you know, join. So if you guys are really interested, I would really get started with this. The minimum... Miranda, that's a good question. It's just that for brand new agents, there is a six months commitment with Zillow. So you guys can start off smaller and say, maybe um, I want to do $200, right? If you do $200, you guys can half and half. So 100 could be LJ mortgage and 100 could be your account, right? But if you have higher than that, let's say you have $500 budget, the maximum will go is 200 does that make sense? Yeah. So again, for leads, so and uh, when you're about to sign up, is a good thing that you probably want to just go over with me, which zip code that you're going, and how many leads is Zillow estimating for you. And we can compare that uh, with other couple of zip codes and then go with the one that makes most sense to you. And out of that budget, you guys will send us an invite for core marketing and we'll go from there. Again, if you guys need more information on this, we can go through this on our one-on-one -on -one meetings. But setting up your free profile it should be a must. Advertisement only if it's needed. If you're already working with at least five different clients and they seem solid, then you shouldn't be doing this. If you're really thirsty, and you feel like, hey, I need more clients, I need more leads, I have no one to work with, then this is a good approach as well, right? Questions, concerns, guys? All right, and we're gonna go back to the other. All right. So the last thing we wanna talk about is our contract, right? This is a sample contract. And the way the market is moving, and where we saw a couple of things, uh, errors by, you know, oh, I wouldn't say errors, just surprises at the closing. The last thing you want is like when you're sitting at the closing table and your client, your buyer is upset about something, right? It could be the final walkthrough. There were some issues with that. It could be the transfer tax, right? It could be one of the contingency. It could be one line in the contract that can mess up the whole deal. 
but we're not expecting you guys to actually know word by word, but we should know where what should be in our contract. So when you're speaking with the attorneys, you guys should have an idea, hey, is this included in the contract? Is not included in the contract, right? And when we say, hey, is this clause in there? Clause is just meaning it's a, it could be a couple of lines, it could be a paragraph. It's a clause, it's a paragraph that's adding to the contract. Or it could be a clause that removing. Hey, we don't want this, we are removing something. So when you hear the word clause, it just means that, hey, this is going to be a paragraph that's added or removing from the contract. And the standard contract is typically around four or five pages. It should not be 30 pages long. Uh, you know, it should be very standard. And majority of the uh, attorneys use a standard contract. If there's any additional things that they need, the word is called rider, R-I-D-E-R, rider. So you have a contract, which is standard. But now if you need additional things to be fixed or anything like that, they will put another page. It's called a rider, right? If you guys need to make changes, they'll use another word called amendments, right? These are the changes that they're doing to the contract. So these are the terms that if you guys hear it from the attorneys, hopefully you guys memorize these and you guys can know what they mean, right? So in the contract, you will have the seller's information. Where is the seller living at? The purchaser information, where they're currently living at. The property that's being sold, right? The location for the property. Right? The items that's included in the sale. This gets a little tricky where you guys are showing the property and you assume that this is included, that is included, and comes the you know final walkthrough, half of the stuff is missing. Right? That's only missing because it's not included in the contract and they're just taking it. And maybe we learned this in our classes too when we we're doing the exams, right? When we got our first license and everything. Anything that's fixture, anything that's already attached to the property should stay unless it's already stated that we're going to remove this, right? All the appliances that you're seeing in there should stay unless they're telling you. If you see a washer and dryer, you should ask the listing agent right away, hey, is this going to be included or not? Some of them will not put anything in MLS when we're reading it. Some of them will do that as a selling point. And some of them will not. So as a realtor, it's our job to ask them. Don't assume anything when it comes to contract, what's included, what's not included. Always verify with the listing agent. Okay? Whatever uh, items that you guys agree on should be on the contract. Then some of them will have items excluded from the sale. And these are the items that will be removed at the closing. Okay? Then your purchase price and the breakdown of that price how much down payment they're putting in the contract, how much uh, loan they're going to get, and how much money they're going to bring at the closing, just like how we have it on our deal sheet. Okay. Next, we have our contingencies. Again, contingencies are conditions, right? When we had a seller's market during COVID time, people were crossing out contingencies left and right. Hey, Remove the home inspection for me. I don't care the condition of the property. I just want to buy the property. Mortgage contingency. I don't care if the bank says it's the property is worth four fifty. As a buyer, I'm willing to pay five hundred thousand dollars. There's a fifty thousand dollars difference. I will come up with that, right? But now we said we are heading towards a buyer's market, so we want to include these contingencies. So you want to tell your buyer that. You know, we want to make sure that if we're putting an offer for $500,000, the bank actually appraises it at $500,000. Okay. So the contingencies must be there and review those with your uh, attorney, with your buyer's attorney, just to make sure that all of you guys are on the same page. Okay. And the main contingency that we see is the home inspection and the bank appraisal contingencies. Those are the top ones that was getting removed. Um, during COVID time, okay? Then we skip a lot of time, we skip the survey. And like I said, it's such a uh, hassle after the closing to go with your neighbors and try to figure things out. Just that you guide your client and say, hey, we're not making any money out of it. I'm just guiding you that 
if you're doing all the other, you're paying for all the other things at the closing table, why not pay for the survey as well, where you know where your boundary lines are for the property. If it says 40 by 100, you're indeed getting 40 by 100 property. So there's no questions, no ifs and buts later on. If anybody challenges you after the closing, you show that same survey, right? So it goes a long way. That $700 or five to $700 that they're going to spend, uh, it will go a long way. So you want to include the survey there too. And again, there's going to be a lot, of, all of these number, numbers that you see here, these are all clauses. Okay, that's going to be included or not going to be included. On the contract, you want want to see your company name too. So to real estate brokerages or creating brokerage information, you should see at least LJ Realty team. You might not see your name on it, but as long as you, you see the company name on it, you will get paid on the contract, okay, when, when it does close. Right? And I believe I mentioned that last time too, the biggest one that we saw is the seller's transfer for tax by standard we assume that the transfer tax is paid by the but there will be some investor or even listing agents they get a little tricky and then they you know maybe include one line towards end of the uh, contract or middle of the contract where they say hey the the transfer tax is paid by the buyer so at the closing now, all of a sudden they have to come up with ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars extra, and that's really you know really hard for them to come up with. It could be a deal breaker. So why not make sure when you're speaking to the attorney, just say, hey, can we talk about the contingencies? We want to make sure there's a home uh, inspection contingency, bank appraisal contingency, and we want to make sure that all these things are protecting our client, including transfer tax. You know. If the property is more than a million dollars, if you're purchasing a property for your buyer and it's worth more than a million dollars, there's a mansion tax. Does not mean that the property is actually a big mansion, but they just call that a mansion tax as long as the property's value is more than a million dollars. And the buyer has to pay that price and it's 1%. So if it's a million dollar property, the buyer is gonna come up with $10,000 for the mansion tax. Okay, that, the seller will never pay that. So if you guys try to negotiate and say, hey, seller or the listing agent, hey, could you guys pay the trans um, mansion tax? They will simply say no. And when they ask you for the transfer tax, hey, can your buyer pay the transfer tax? You should say no. Okay. So you want to protect your client. So this way, when they're at the closing table, everything is going in their favors because we want, we're representing them. We're getting paid because of them. So why not be, you know, put them, their interest first and make sure that all these things are checked off and not worry about just our commission. Hey, how much are we going to make? Is it 1%, one and a half, 2%? Why not check these off as well, right? And we said, as long as the property is on MLS, you will get paid, but still having a communication with your um, listing agent just makes things much clearer, much easier for everyone at the closing. We want happy clients, so we want repeat business. We want referrals from them. But if they're going to end up losing money at the closing, trust me, they'll be upset. They will not write a good review for you, and they will not refer any clients to you. So it's best to put them, you know, uh, their interest first. Any questions, concerns on this, guys? Right. Again, it's the attorney's job to review these, but we want to question these uh, question the attorney makes you look better, makes you look professional uh, that you're asking the right questions. Right. All right. Let me just see if there's anybody question in the chat box. So no questions on this, huh? Anybody, any questions just in, that, in general before we close out in the next five minutes or so? And this was uh, an idea by Mohammed. So thank you for that. So if you guys want to go over anything in the future, the next meeting on Wednesday, please just shoot a text message or just send me a message in Teams. And, uh, you know, we can go through those too. 
but please, after this meeting, please make sure that everybody has a Zillow account, a free profile set up. And, uh, you know, if you want to do the advertisement, great. If not, still have the profile set up. Once you do that, just send me a message so I can send you an invite to join our LGBT team so you show up on our pages where when we see all these agents here, your name comes up too. So the first step is to create a free file. The second step is just send me a message and I will send you an invite to be added here. Okay. All right, guys, if there's no questions or concerns, uh, we will meet again on Wednesday, 11 o'clock, and we'll have a different topic. Anything along those lines, you know, along the way, if you guys have any questions, just shoot me a message. Okay. All right, so I don't see any other questions, guys. So I will see you guys next time. You guys can get going one by one. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your positive feedback, too, guys. Thank you. Yes, the goal is just to learn a few things. Even if you learn one thing, you know, each meeting, that's great. You know, it should be helpful. You never know when it's going to come handy when you're having a conversation with your clients.